Okay, cool. So today we're gonna do some fall treats. Cause I'm fat and I like food. So this is gonna be so much fun. So um, let's just kick it off with the first, I was gonna say recipe, it's not a recipe. It's only like two and a half ingredients, hold. This is the first ingredient. <laughs> it's champagne. Technically, this is Moscato Spumante. I meant to get the Barefoot Prosecco. This is just gonna be extra sweet. You can do what you want. We are making apple cider mimosas. I am a basic bitch. I feel like we know this already. Um, and I love mimosas, okay? I love them. I will say, Sometimes the acid gets to me, and I can't do the orange juice. But this time of year, I have an excellent alternative in apple cider. Oh yes, baby. So, uh, step one is opening your wine. I've done this before. Don't worry, don't worry. expert um i have this cute little cup it says magic potion you can't see that but i'll show you some up close shots pour in however much you want i'm not doing anything today so okay then you take your apple cider shake it because it's always got that stuff at the bottom okay it is Le shook. I don't know why I thought that was gonna fizz. Um, that's about it for me, okay? If you wanna go half and half, one to one ratio, I support you, you do you. I'm not doing that, it's fine. Now, if you don't drink, or you're too young to drink, or you don't wanna drink, that's okay. You can still do this recipe with maybe some like, sparkling cider or some carbonated water or some soda water something bubbly and some cider or you just drink some cider straight up because it's fall and you can drink cider um, I'm gonna do a little garnish with an apple this apple needs to be done anyway which is why I'm using it um, but I'm just gonna, I'm gonna cut off a little sliver a little tiny sliver and you can put that on the side in the little rim and then oh you can see my pajamas i've been exposed i'm i'm in my cozy pajamas okay get yourself a straw because if you're a real basic bitch you're probably wearing lipstick right now delicious and then you have a nice apple snack to eat as you bake increasingly more difficult items. The other two recipes that we're making today are both equally fall, but they appeal to possibly different audiences or they appeal to just me, either way. So um, the first thing that we're going to do is start making some pumpkin spice cupcakes with a cream cheese frosting. Oh, oh. And then while those are baking, we're going to make um, we're going to make s'mores calzones. So the cupcakes are a little bit more difficult. I have a recipe; it's linked down below. Um, I've already set out the ingredient, a little mise en place action, as if I really know what I'm doing. Um, so let's get started on that. So got my recipe on my handy dandy computer. Okay, step one, preheat the oven to 350, or that's 177 degrees Celsius if you're not American. So far, so easy. We're doing great, guys. Don't worry. Um, and then it says, line a 12 cup muffin pan with cupcake line. So let's start off with the batter. We have, oh, let me, let me make this a little bit prettier. Shh, why are you doing this? Start. Pick. Start. It's 
hot. That's not that hot. Why are you beeping? Is it just telling me that it's preheating? Because that's pretty dumb. I promise I know how to use an oven. Okay, so we're starting off with one cup of flour. Okay, and then in here we have one teaspoon baking powder, half a teaspoon of baking soda, and half a teaspoon of salt. I'm using kosher salt. I don't know what the difference is, but I do know that it's a, an important difference. I think it's just gonna be beeping at me for a while, so I'm sorry. But putting that in with the flour, yes. Okay, now we have one teaspoon of cinnamon and one and a half teaspoons of pumpkin pie spice. Um, if you don't have pumpkin pie spice, because I had to search to find some at the store, you can use allspice. Google it first because there is a slight difference and you need to like modify the allspice. I don't know what the difference is, but I'm dumping this in here. Oh, I did that wrong. It went all over the place. Okay, and then we whisk. Don't take whisks. Smells amazing already. I'm down. Don't worry, it's my oven, probably not yours. Okay, it is whisked. Set aside, okay, well, it's aside. Whisk the oil, eggs, brown sugar, okay. Now we have oil. This is one half cup of canola oil. I need to change my battery, neat. Okay, I think that's the same angle. Not totally sure. Evan's still beeping. I don't know why. It's never done this before. Whatever. Stop! There's nothing in there. Preheating. That's great. You don't need to beep every time just to tell me. I know that you're preheating. Okay, whatever. We're going to keep going. All right. Whisk the oil, eggs, we need two eggs. Dos huevos, that's two eggs if you don't speak Spanish. Brown sugar, we have one cup of brown sugar. And then another half cup, no quarter cup of brown sugar. Okay, and then we add a cup of pumpkin, okay, and then this is, I think a quarter teaspoon, no, one teaspoon of vanilla extract, pure vanilla extract specifically. Okay, now you're just gonna whisk this together until it's combined. Um, I'm doing this by hand, I do have a mixer right next to me, but I don't, I don't like to make sense all the time. Okay, so deal with it. This is not the right whisk for this. <laughs> Everything's great. Okay, that looks to be combined. Get out of the kitchen. No puppies allowed. This is a kitchen. Go lay down. She casually walked out there. She's not afraid of me. Who is Alpha? Calm down, oven. Are you gonna do this the whole time you bake too? Because that's not cool. It's kind of annoying. I really don't want to have to call the husband and be like, hey, how does the oven work? <laughs> but I might have to, I don't know. Okay, combine, pour the wet ingredients into the dry ingredients and use a misker, a misker? A mixer or a whisk, or both is a misker, until completely combined. Batter will be thick. They didn't say how many C's, so I don't know how thick it's gonna be. They just used one C, so maybe it's just gonna be like a little thick. Turn that on. I'm doing a little bit at a time. Don't you normally add the dry to the wet? It's weird. Just doing what it says, I'm just reading. Okay, I feel like I can add all of it now. Probably get an apron. Oh my god, it smells so good. It smells like Christmas. Okay.
Okay, so our batter is done. Let's give it a little tasty taste. That's amazing. I was like, kind of not sure because there's not that much sugar. I got these super cute Halloween liners from Kroger. We got black. We got green with bats and it says fantastic. Why are you still beeping? You got lavender. You got these cute little um, like pastel orange that say trick or treat. You can't see that at all. Oh yes, oh yes. I have my big lights on so that's probably why you can't see anything. Um, and then you got these purple that say spooktacular and they got like some cats and pumpkins and ghosts and stuff on them and then you got green. So I really like these orange so I'm going to do mostly orange. Okay. Okay, it says to fill them two thirds of the way up um, so that they can rise. Bake for 20 to 22 minutes. I'll see if my uh, fire alarm goes off. Quick. Okay, we've got a timer going for 20 minutes. Why are you still beeping? Let me call it. Next up, I do not have a recipe. <laughs> I came up with this from my own brain. We're gonna take some flaky crescent dinner rolls, butter flavor, and we're gonna fill them with chocolate chips and marshmallows, and then we're gonna coat them in cinnamon and sugar. Now, I did come up with this from my brain, but I feel like it already exists in the world. So if you came up with this, Great minds. I promise I didn't steal this from anybody that I know of. <laughs> Maybe I should just find a recipe and be like, yeah, I totally use this recipe. I don't know. Um, so we're gonna uh, we're gonna open up these dinner. Wait, before I do this, let's get a baking sheet. And some parchment paper. Wax paper. Uh, aluminum foil. I think parchment paper would be preferable, uh, but I'm using aluminum foil because we go through parchment paper like it's nobody's business in this house. Oh yeah. Take out your little crescents. So, we're gonna start off with just a couple of them. I've not done this before. I'm making this up from my head as we go. This could go really well. Okay, so I have some semi-sweet chocolate baking chips. Wait, I know where I came up with this idea. <laughs> They're mini s'mores calzones. I work at a restaurant that sells s'mores calzones. This is basically, God, I'm either really smart or really dumb, and I'm not sure. Okay, so I added some chocolate chips and some marshmallows, and now I'm gonna just roll this up, roll it up, just like that, yeah. Okay, this is cinnamon sugar with just a little bit of nutmeg because I think cinnamon and nutmeg go perfectly together. And I'm just gonna roll it in here. Doesn't that look delicious? This is a great idea, good job me. Okay, now I'm gonna do that like 12 more times. Make sure you close up the edges and just go for it, yo. If you want more or less marshmallows, more or less chocolate, you go for it, my friend. I give you permission. Isabella, you can't have this. Can dogs have marshmallows? Hey Google! Can dogs have marshmallows? According to the Labrador site, yes, you can use marshmallow for dogs on very rare occasions. Your dog can have regular, plain sugar marshmallows if you're determined to give your dog a tasty, sweet treat. Uh, this is gonna be good. Penny, you want a marshmallow? You ready? Oh my god, they're so dumb. They cannot catch things. It just like straight up hits them in the mouth. Yeah, eat the marshmallow, dum dum. Okay. 
Okay. Penny doesn't like marshmallows. Eat, eat the marshmallow. I gave you a, a tasty treat, according to Google. Ungrateful. Evan, I will give you a marshmallow if you stop yelling at me. Okay, so these are done. They just need to go in the oven, so I'm gonna set them aside. Ideally, I would put them in the refrigerator, but here we are. Um, now I'm gonna make some icing. We're gonna add half cup of unsalted butter. Sorry if you can hear my dogs drinking water in the background. Oh, oh. Okay, okay, I'm coming. These look beautiful. Wow, let's check if they're done. They're done! Okay, now we gotta figure out how long to bake these crescent rolls for. Okay, we're gonna do 370. Just follow the instructions on your package, but I'm gonna do 370. It says 375, but I feel like because it's they're stuffed, you know? Um, and then we're gonna make them for nine minutes, but let the oven do its thing. So back to this. Um, we're gonna do a full stick of butter and a full block of full fat cream cheese. Both of them softened to room temperature. That's very important. I don't know why, but I know that it is important. Okay, we're gonna mix these two together on high until they are smooth and creamy. Okay, so now we're gonna add three cups of confectioner sugar to our butter and cream cheese mix. I'm just gonna go a little bit at a time. I'm supposed to also add uh, salt. This is about an eighth of a teaspoon, also known as a dash, and then half of a teaspoon of vanilla. This is how it's looking. Okay, and then let's add some more sugar. Don't don't just like go for it, okay? Go easy. Okay. This is hard to do with one hand. It's fine though. See, look, it just kind of like balls up. If you've ever baked anything before, you're probably like, oh my god, this girl. And you know what? I don't blame you. Judge me, please. Judge me in the comments. Engagement is engagement, right? Okay. Mm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, I put one of the cupcakes in the fridge so maybe it'll cool a little bit faster. Okay, let's go for it. Let's let's get these little minis. Little mini s'mores. Those look delicious. Oh, break everything. They smell incredible. I mean, I don't really know how to test if these are done or not, but the outside feels cooked, so there's that. Okay, I'm gonna let everything cool. I'm gonna eat some lunch. I'll check back with you. Okay, so our cupcakes mm, are cool-ish. They're definitely room temperature. We've got a knife and a silicone spatula. We have our frosting. Um, we're gonna try and frost the cool one first. We'll see. And I'm just gonna go for it. I don't have like any specific uh, techniques. If you wanted to use a piping bag, I'm sure that would be beautiful. Okay, we frosted one. Um, I bought these sprinkles they're like halloween sprinkles and they're super cute um i think you could easily just do like a sprinkle of cinnamon on this and that would be really beautiful i'm gonna try this it's like 
white and yellow Jimmy sprinkles, which are like the long little turd looking ones, and then some little orange pumpkins. So I thought that would be adorable. And there's probably an efficient way to do this, but I don't know what that way would be. I'm gonna try and do the sprinkles over a plate. Oh. Well, they all went in one area. <laughs> okay. Super cute. There's 12 cupcakes and there's still hella frosting left. So I would say maybe half the recipe on that one. Uh, it, it would probably be enough if you're doing like a full cake, like a layer cake, but for cupcakes, that's way too much. Unless you're gonna pipe it and add a lot of, you do you, but next time I make this, I'm gonna have the recipe for that. Um, I'm gonna eat an ugly one, but um, I did the sprinkles on top and I sprinkled a little bit of cinnamon on this one. I don't like that look. I would just do the sprinkles, um, but I did do one with just cinnamon and it looks nice and classy, so. You know, you've got options there. Uh, let's taste test, shall we? I'm really excited. They didn't stick too much to the liners, so that's good. And these are cheap liners, so I was kind of afraid of that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It kind of just reminds me of a spice cake. My husband's gonna love this. That's his favorite type of cake. But it's got a little bit of like a gingerbread vibe to it. It's not very pumpkin-y at all. That's what the inside looks like. Super fluffy, moist, good icing. It's a win for sure. I don't know about the sprinkles. The sprinkles are very crunchy. And the cake is so soft that it like, it's a little unbalanced. Now, let's try these bad boys. These are the little mini s'mores calzones. Break it open. Okay. That's delicious. I'm amazing. Uh huh. Yep. Yep. I think maybe more marshmallows next time. Very good. Okay, let me show you a cross section. That's what we're working with. The chocolate melted down the right amount in my mind. Um, croissants nice and fluffy, got good texture with the cinnamon sugar. I would have liked to do more marshmallows next time, but you know, keep that in mind. S'mores calzones, delicious. Pumpkin spice cupcakes, delicious. Apple cider mimosas, delicious. I love fall. Woo! All right, guys. Um, that's all I have to show you guys today. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Uh, if you want to see more cooking videos, <laughs> see me struggle bus, then hit the like button so that I know that you have enjoyed this content. Um, subscribe. Hit that bell button so you get notified every time I post a video, which for the rest of this month is every day. It's going so well so far. It's not even October 1st for me. <laughs> for you, I don't know what day it is. So, dope. Um, follow me on Instagram. If you make these recipes, tag me. Especially the, the calzone, because this one I kind of made up. It's dope. Holler at your girl. Come get some icing, because I've got a lot of icing. <laughs> A lot of icing. Alright, bye guys.